In the spring of 2020, our lives shifted in a way unimaginable with the onset of the COVID pandemic. The arts community was among the most affected by the shutdown, isolating artists from audiences, colleagues, and opportunities to sell their work in traditional ways. But Ingenuity won, and many artists found new ways to connect and also share their work. Our local community of Cape Inn met the challenge by taking advantage of the new media formats that offered a platform to artists for sharing their artistic journey and work. This took the form of Cape Ann Art Waves, a bi-weekly video program that captured the essence of this uncertain time in our local art scene. Continuing beyond the pandemic through January of 2023, as co-creators, co-hosts, co-producers, Christine Fisher and Jacqueline Genham DeFalco, also both artists, are proud to present the highlights of the 75 interviews that capture this critical moment in history and the rich stories of the artists, gallerists, and curators from across the spectrum. We are honored to share this compendium of highlights to broaden the reach of these artists and continue our rich heritage as an arts destination. Many thanks to the Cape Ann Museum for becoming the official steward of these stories for future generations and to the Cape Ann Savings Bank for the financial support to create this video. We hope the videos will enhance the effort to brand Cape Ann as a vibrant, forward-looking arts community building on its rich heritage for generations to come. It's sort of authentic way of painting, I feel like when you paint with a lot of gesture, um, you really can't hide very much and that can be, it's, it's kind of a daring way to paint. I, I would say, I feel like it takes maybe a little bit of courage to do that because things can go wrong and they do. <laughs> I have a lot of duds, um, but when they go right, I think they just are really powerful pieces. So I encourage people to try to work in that sort of looser, um, free way if it's something that they're kind of struggling with, because I think mm -hmm. it can be, be hard when you're a beginning painter. A photograph is only a guide. I still have in my mind's eye the image and the feeling and the atmosphere and the light of that moment in time. And that's another reason I love photography because everyone talks about the golden hour and how the light is so perfect at a certain time of the day, especially on Cape Ann. Um, with a camera, you get it. You capture it at that exact moment when it's perfect. Five minutes later, it's gone. Right. Um, so that's really, um, you know, the, the photograph is the baseline, but I use my own imagery and memory to, to bring it to the point where it's what I want it to be. The takeaway from my photographs, I believe, I, I want people to look at it and go, oh, I know what that is. But then if they look a little closer, there's going to be something off. Uh, yes. Something quirky. Yeah. I find whenever I'm stuck, go look at a flower. Mother Nature already did all the work. All you have to do is pick up some of those already put down colors and reintroduce them to your own work. And oftentimes that, that, that works, it takes a lot of stress out of it. And we're gonna share some of those um, pieces of nature here uh, while we're talking because it's so obvious when we see your work. It's true, it's part of intuitive painting. Um, after I got into printmaking, um, it gave me a vehicle to um, jump on the bandwagon and expand that idea, ideas with paint and paper. And I started doing collage and absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was, I thought my paintings, previous paintings were too tight. You know, I kept thinking, oh my goodness, I'm tight as a tick, but that's not a good thing. So I started just letting go and I came up with all of these techniques. And then later I thought, I may as well teach these. I want to pass it on to whoever would like to try it and not how to paint. Uh, it's a, that's an individual thing. But these are like little gifts. Um, try this, try that, and uh, and it can make such a change in a person's life. You know, their art life. 
if it's called fine art photography, it goes beyond just capturing a thing. And it is a, a piece of art in itself. We do, the thing doesn't matter. It, the thing is just a, a way to get to the uh, image that you want, that you can see in your mind or that you can feel. And, and it has to have more than just record what's in front of you. It has to capture a feeling or, you know, some kind of emotion. Part of what's so fascinating about painting is getting those marks down there, which again, mark making, oh, you know, it's just, I love getting those marks down there. And, and this is where the uh, expressive uh, style really uh, mm -hmm. takes form, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. is getting those initial marks down there and uh, sort of staking your claim as to what's going to happen here. And then you're working off of that. It's like right. a call and response to the situation. Right. What is this calling for you? And then working off of relationships. That's um, right. I love that expression. And it really becomes a dialogue, doesn't it? It becomes a conversation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That kind of focus. Uh, is something I've enjoyed more and more throughout my life, uh, cultivating that focus so that I can do things uh, more than once and not lose the joy in it and also not lose the attention that it takes and attention to detail that it takes to do that well and safely. That's a beautiful way of putting it, having a rich inner life, Greg, and I'm going to remember that because I think um, that applies to, I think, a lot of folks that are deeply into their craft. I found I could say things with color and shapes that I couldn't say any other way, things I had no words for. And I, I think, love that quote. Me too. I think that is, every artist, I think, really can appreciate that. I mean, yeah. It's, you can talk about your process, that's that's a fairly easy thing to do, but mm -hmm. to talk about how you um, approach that empty piece of paper or that empty canvas and where you go for that, where, where that leads you. Mm -hmm. And that's where you find the frustration, that's where you find the excitement, that's mm -hmm. where you find the satisfaction. And right. I, it's very internal and, you know, words are hard to come by that can, really, you know, describe that. There's a, there's a curve, right? And until you reach the curve, it's, it's, it's total struggle. Uh, I mean, sometimes you cry, sometimes you say this, I'll never do this, what am I doing, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's terrible. But once you reach the thing and you, they're not done yet, but you can see that they're, that they're manifesting, let's say. Then the down the downhill is 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 really nice and and it's just adding and and, and having fun. But that you know the, the first three quarters is a is a journey. Tough. It's a journey, yeah. an uphill journey. Yeah, it's yeah. tough. Yeah. For me, uh, research is always an integral part of what I do. Um, it's almost like I mean I. I love to just crosshatch and stuff like that, but I'm not an artist who kind of plays around and comes up with ideas through that. I always have an idea or something I'm upset about. Mm -hmm. And so I always feel that I have to do research mm -hmm. um, because it always starts, yeah, it always starts intellectually. Mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the things I've actually liked about making art is that whatever I choose, I get to do all this research, you know, which I love. The whole idea of bringing an artistic community into my home every summer was such an exciting part of my childhood. So that became the template for me in terms of following your heart, uh, having creativity be part of my background, and finding a vision um, that that worked for mm -hmm. for one's you know vocation and avocation being being united. I would hope that anybody viewing this and anybody who comes in contact with with me or my shop really appreciates that 
every single one of us being here matters mm -hmm. and that being present in the moment is the greatest gift we can give ourselves and to really try to stay grounded and rooted into mother earth and to not get carried away with fake drama and be mindful when fake drama is coming up and just be grateful there's always something to be grateful for no matter what i also realized i had to continue to distinguish the actual designs mm -hmm. and one of the ways that i have done that from the beginning and it's sort of a trademark now is getting the glass and the pottery to work together and stay together and be play off of each other and that's kind of become a sig a, a symbol that this is my work you mm -hmm. know and as opposed to trying to put all these you know other things together I really want the glass and the pottery to play off of each other. And the more that I was able to do that, then the more that um, the work became my work. Uh, but you know, in, in, in life, I feel that there is so much noise, right? Mm -hmm. There's just so much noise from, you know, politics to, you know, what's going on with us emotionally. So creating art is my way of offsetting the noise. It really is. I'm drawn to the adventure of art making. I love the discovery of creating. I, I never know where I'm going to get what I'm going to get. I'm attracted to those fun, little serendipitous, unexpected moments. Now that's not to say that making art isn't challenging, especially for me when I get going, I have kind of a push-pull uh, response. You know, I, I'm eager to get in there and get my hands dirty and get started, but I'm also, you know, concerned about, geez, what is this going to turn into? Do I know what I'm doing? Do I know where I'm going? And, and the answer is no. <laughs> that was oil, oil on canvas. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was in the boatyard here. That was, and again, that was another boat my grandfather had built. Mm, that's 1939 uh, uh, John Alden 33 foot uh, big s sloop and, and the luckiest Montgomery built boat ever because from 39 there really aren't too many boats left especially considering they used mm. iron fastenings <laughs> oh boy but this particular one uh, started with the usual approach of building up from a uh, a sketch in burnt sienna and laying in some some light tones there are intuitive choices i'm making about what what color goes next to what color right you know, when i'm um making these marks you know it's like right. i'm it, it's like okay now i'm going to add this now i'm going to add that this, this to me is a very exciting part of painting. And then, you know, sometimes, you know, I'll make some marks and I'll think, oh, I ruined the painting. And um, later <laughs> that will become my favorite part, you know. And well said, that's, that's, um, that's great. Yeah, it's, you know, the accidents and the, uh, it's, I guess it's, you know, that those moments when I can allow something to happen. Um, aging and the creative process seems like an appropriate uh, topic for you to be focused on. This is your interviews with other artists going through the process. So just reflecting on that, tell me a little bit about what you've learned. Most of us still feel when we approach a, a blank piece of paper that this is a challenge we're not sure we can are up to. Uh, and it's uh, starting at the beginning, always, all over again. Uh, by the time we've reached this age or any age, older age, you're, you're used to rejection and you're used to success, but you know that success follows rejection. And, and when you're younger, you don't know that. Flowers represent for me, our lives really, it, they're fragile, they're beautiful, they give you a lot of joy, but you always know it's it's not going to last a long time. I I did my presentation, and she came up to me afterwards and said, "You know, you really need to, you should work on sculpture, and you should go to the Museum of Fine Arts and work with Jonathan Fairbanks." So, I took an internship there, and Jonathan, you know, has really been my mentor through all of this. I've learned so much from him about, um, you know, connoisseurship curatorial work but also you know 
relating to artists and what it means to be an artist. Jonathan is also an artist. His father was a sculptor and he made sure um, when I was in his department that I had all these opportunities to go, for instance, and meet Walker Hancock and, and get to know him and ask him questions. And artist, it used to be that uh, one day of the month was designated when artists could bring in their work. And our department was American Decorative Arts and Sculpture, and it also handled the craft um, in the American collection. And so a lot of artists would come in and bring him their work to look at, and he would critique it. And mm -hmm. that was quite an education to see how he related to them and how encouraging he was, no matter how good or bad the work seemed to us, you know, um, he always found something in it to encourage them because we all start somewhere. Right. And we, we need the support of others to, yeah. you know, to rise uh, above where we are at the moment. Thank you to the thousands of viewers who have enjoyed Cape Ann Art Wave since its inception. In March of 2020 on Channel 12, 1623 Studios Media and YouTube, Art Waves can now be found in the digital library of the Cape Ann Museum, housed on Vimeo. Episodes will be available by year. Each video includes a list of artists interviewed in that calendar year. A very special thanks to our amazing sponsors, videographer Anders Johnson, musicians Steve Lacey and Pat Verga, graphic designer Linda Stockman, the team at 1623, and Sea Arts colleagues who supported this program since the beginning.